guys. Welcome to Coffee Break. You gotta not laugh, because you gotta be professional. Yeah, but I'm not professional, so I laugh. We just filmed our intro and our outro two seconds apart. So we're back with parts two, possibly three, depending on how I split up the last episode. They've just entered the uh, scary, go scary go round, and Trevor has been knocked unconscious by a large ball of metal. What is that? Is that just a bludgeoning object? Bludgeoning object. Uh, what giant are the chains supposed object? to do? Because I kind of thought the chains cause were confusion the and objects. wrap around. Yeah, I mean that also bludgeons. I mean, I feel like the safest thing to do would just be to like hold on to the chains because they're spinning with the saws, so you're not gonna hit. No, no, no. There are concentric oh. circles going like this, so there are like layers as you get closer to the center where it switches directions. So there are things going whoosh, 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 whoosh. Oh. Here we go. Jenny braced herself on all fours as she tried to regain her balance. I he mean, he balance. <laughs> he balance. She had barely dodged a saw blade when she was clipped in the side by a wooden post. The rounded post did its job well, knocking her to the ground where she scrambled to maneuver away from it. Looking around, she had a moment to catch her breath. Then she saw a blade protruding from the ground, traveling the opposite direction as her rotation, heading right for her middle. Sucking in a big breath, she arced her back up like a cat, and the blade cut a strip from her thin coat as it passed under her stomach. She let her breath out and glanced up. There, passing right above her field of vision, just outside her reach, was the button. A small red button embedded in a wooden pole, stationary to the platform, with small spikes spotting its wood surface. A moment later, and Jenny wouldn't have seen it... That's the end of the sentence. <laughs> As it is, it was already speeding away, and Jenny was trying her hardest to get moving in that direction. She started to get up, wobbling off balance, when a wooden post, like the first, maybe even the same one, came around and hit her from the side. Ugh. Bracing for impact with her arms, the post slammed in her to her frame. This time, instead of knocking her down, it carried her with it. Of and course, as she, the only things that she's not agile enough to get out of the way of are the only are the things that aren't going to cut ones. her in half. Yeah. It carried her away as she held on for dear life. Wouldn't it be funny if they press the button and it makes everything go faster, and the button that turns it off isn't even on the ride? It's like on the front of it that you could just press before getting on. And uh, Sam's just like... She was traveling much too fast, at the wooden post's mercy. Then she looked back over her shoulder as best she could to see where she had, was heading. To her horror, a blood-stained mace, swinging freely, was heading straight for her, going to sandwich her between it and the post. She sandwich? let go- Sandwich. Oh, I thought you said sandwich. Sandwich. Spooky. Spooky sandwich. She let go and dropped just in time to hear the mace strike the post. Unfortunately, with, she dropped right on the saw blade. With a, with a large thud, but that would have done serious damage to her spine. I keep- I keep- <laughs> Spooky diamond. The fall had knocked the wind out of her as she had landed on her back. We haven't heard a thing about Jack since he fell on his face getting on the ride. He I know, could he probably, probably fell dead. off. He could be dead by now. Ca couching? Crouching, she looked to her side and saw a hanging, <laughs> mutilated body no, cut Sam. off at the torso. You're about to miss the mutilated body! No, Sam. She couched. She couched. She screamed. Scurrying away, she slipped and fell on her back. Teddy! To her left, a... Mm. <laughs> to her left, a perpendicular saw blade raced towards her neck. She screamed louder, and she watched <laughs> defenseless. Then, suddenly, the blade stopped spinning. The floor beneath her stopped moving as well. Jenny lay astonished. Wait, are we gonna find out that Jack hit the button? <laughs> Maybe. Jenny lay astonished as the sharp, charaded edges of the saw came to rest inches from her neck. Of no, course. It's gonna be Timmy. Couldn't, couldn't be like over here. It has to be right here. Right. And she heard Timmy's voice cry, I did it! She Love sighed. Him. One big sigh of relief and smiled despite her surroundings. Surroundings. She had never appreciated Jimmy's small size more than, than this moment. This I wrote for myself. For sure. Maybe this was the same day that you discovered you could fit inside Paul's guitar case. Slowly getting up, she saw Jimmy run towards her, a mix of glee and worry on his face. Wouldn't it- Oh! Wouldn't it be terrible if the ride's done, they're all getting off, someone trips, and just four heads of saw? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Welcome to a Final Destination movie. Are you okay? He asked. I'm fine, Jenny answered. You saved my neck, literally. She gestured towards the nearby saw blade. The momentary gleeful expression on Jimmy's face from getting to the button had worn off, and w and the worried look returned. They turned to the outside of the circle and easily walked to the end and off the platform. Jenny's head still spun, but she was just happy to be alive at that moment. Then she noticed the group several yards to her left. They were huddled around Trevor, who lay on the ground, with Jack propping his head up. Blood covered the top and ran down the sides of his head. Man, Jack, you're so useless. Uh, Trevor, Trevor. I thought Trevor was propping Jack. No. Trevor who lay on the ground with Jack, propping his head up. Yeah, you know, I, I don't he know- he was laying on the ground with Jack. This sentence doesn't tell you which one of them is hurt. <laughs> Let's find out who on this episode of Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, what happened? 
she screamed as she ran up to them. I don't know. You just went on to a scary go-round with circulating saw blades. What possibly could have happened? Trevor had his eyes open, but looked like someone just woken up from okay, a deep so, slumber. So, so it was Trevor's. Trevor. He answered her question. I'm fine. I got hit in the head, but it looks worse than it is. It's just a small cut on my forehead. Jack was in the process of wiping as much blood off as he could and tying a piece of shirt around Trevor's head. You're just lucky you didn't lose that head, he said as he finished and helped Trevor to his feet. It's your best feature. He was wobbling at first, but that was expected. He soon recovered and appeared only slightly worse for wear. All seemed relieved. Jenny spoke just then, recalling the hanging body. I was so scared one of you had been cut in half. I saw the body too, said Jack. It was gruesome, but it didn't- <laughs> It was spooky. It was spooky. It was gruesome. <laughs> but it didn't look fresh. Then he looked away, feeling sickened by the thought. You didn't think you were the first ones to visit my amusement park, did you? Said the psycho plainly. In fighting for her life, Jenny had almost forgotten he was there. She now again felt the large amount of unease his voice caused in her. Timmy, or should I say Teddy, good work. I hope you enjoyed the first attraction to my of my park. At the sound of this psycho using Timmy's special nickname, Sam squeezed her hand into fists, then released them. Good job. Squeezed jo her hand into hands, fists. Hands into fists. I said that. You did not use I did. Hand. I did say hands. You did. Roll, Roll back the tape. tape. <laughs> what? Good job, Tim, Trevor said authentically. Obviously, you were right about your abilities. I'm sorry for doubting. Jack didn't say anything, but Jenny didn't really expect him to, and she wasn't about to bring it up because she knew her bragging about her ab agility had been in vain, and she didn't want to admit that she would have been dead if it weren't for Teddy. And that, my friends, is a run-on sentence. I don't even get what I was trying to say in that sentence. Yes, the ringmaster said impatiently. Congratulations, but we need to be moving on to the next ride. Are we only have all night. <laughs> Sam felt sick to her stomach. She didn't like gore. The sight of Trevor with blood all over his face had started, startled and scared her, and now she struggled to remain calm as the group followed the path a short ways to the next ride. Sam's character only would have gotten weirder had we continued to have her be emo. <laughs> you know what? I think I think I'm doing this new this new trick that I employed for um, the Shook's Tale, where each of these sections, broken up by the line of stars, oh, no. is narrated sort of in the perspective of one particular character, even though narrated by a third person. So like this section is now gonna be like, Sam was this and Sam thought this. Okay, so this is Sam's section. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Cause we haven't heard a lot on her character. She was however greatly relieved that all, especially Teddy, had not been badly injured. The next ride had been visible from a ways off, but no one had commented on it yet. There was nothing to say about it. It looked like a regular old roller coaster. Clearly, the psycho had modified it too, but it wasn't immediately clear how. As they walked nearer, Jack was telling them what had happened on the scary go round, how he saw Trevor lying on the ground, coming his way, and how he had bravely pulled him off the ride. Upon prodding, Timmy had also described a bit about his experience with the ride. He wasn't the type to gloat, but he had clearly had the easiest time navigating through it. Finally, they reached the roller coaster. They actually reached a staircase leading up to where the roller coaster started. <laughs> Sam only hesitated for a moment before following the group up the stairs. She was amazed at how calm everyone appeared to be. They must have just all come to the conclusion that they had no other choice. As they climbed the stairs, the ringmaster's voice came back over the air to explain what was next. I let you ride the last one as you liked. But no cheating this time, you will all be riding my roller roaster. This time, Jack responded. Have I told you guys recently how much I hate puns? That's a good place to stop. Question number one. What do you think this roller roaster is all about? Roasting? We'll see. Question number two. Who's this Jimmy character? Are we going to hear more about him? Find out next time on... Coffee Break. Coffee Break. We'll get better at that. Yeet, yeet.